Welcome everyone to our 2023 MD Live Arnold Brazil Watch Party. I am Jen Jerisi. With me, of course, is Giles Tiger Thomas. And joining us shortly will be Miguel Chain live from Brazil. And of course, Chain. yes, yes, Miguel Chain. And of course, Chain. joining us is our very special guest of honor. She has numerous titles to mention, but most recently and notably, she is a two-time Art Classic champion, the 2022 Honor Brazil Women's Physique champion, the 2022 New York Pro Women's Physique champion, and most recently she's defeated Sarah Villegas for the 2022 Olympia Women's Physique division. Please welcome to our show the 2022 Miss Olympia Women's Physique champion, Natalia Coelho. Yay! 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 <laughs> and just as I said that, my camera went. But yeah, where you gone? Where you gone, my judge? But it's all good. It's all good. I'm right here. There we go. Good. I'm right here. Got camera two set up. So there we go. <laughs> so what a show we had today. I mean, Beirut Tubani has won the Arnold Brazil. He's clinched his Olympia qualification. What are your thoughts? Let's go Natalia first, ladies first. One second, my connection is... Uh, Jen, can you see my... I'm trying to log in on my computer. Can you see that there? Yes, I can, I can see your... Uh, I can see on your phone. Okay, I'm gonna switch to my laptop because the connection is not... Can you hear me good? Yes, you're coming mm -hmm. in fine. Oh, here we go. Yep, here we go. Here's your computer. Okay, so this morning I was super excited because when I saw Nescau, which is Wellington, and and Beirut's like on stage, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know how that's gonna go because they look super good. And Beirut's, I mean, of course he has more size. He has more like volume. I think he was looking better. However, his standing was off. So he was like melting down a lot. And because of that, we couldn't see as much details. Like his lower back, especially, I noticed that he had more depth than what we could see. And I'm like, damn, guys, like I wish he could fix that for finals. And honestly, he did. You know, like he came back, he fixed the tanning, he looked better. In my opinion, he was sharper, like harder. So I agree with the results. I think he looked really, really good. Totally agree with you. He really pulled it out at the end. That was an amazing performance by Beirut Tabani. He was drier. He was sharper. I was a little worried about him during prejudging. He looked like he was just sweating profusely. His tan looked off. Giles, what were your thoughts on Beirut during the prejudging? Well, I knew he'd, uh, he'd, he'd do it exactly what he did at Romania last year because I was doing at Romania doing the live stream with Lauren. And he did exactly the same there. He kind of looked, it was very, very close between him and Brett Wilkin. It could have gone either way at prejudging. But at night show, and it was only a few hours later, like this show, I knew that he'd correct everything because, I mean, if you watch the live stream for Romania last year, when he, even when he just came out from backstage, he hadn't even walked properly on stage. You could hear my reaction. I was going absolutely crazy because he just looked absolutely incredible. And he did exactly the same here. So, um, but I'll tell you what, though, um, I, I, that Wellington's really good. I mean, uh, yes, um, he's, he's better balanced than Beirut's. I mean, I thought that um, Beirut's quads, I think, have got worse from the front than they yeah. were in Romania. I, I don't rem I think. I, I think maybe his upper body's just got bigger because I spoke to Milos yesterday, and he said um, he said it looks like uh, Beirut's is going to be about two kilos heavier wow. than than Romania last year. And I think I think if that is the case, it's all gone to his upper body and not to his legs. And that's where he needed to get it. So he did look a little bit imbalanced in those front shots, but from the side, it's like Nick Walker, that the quads don't look great from the front, but from the side and the back, everything looks great. He's got his crazy glutes. He's got a crazy upper body. I mean, I love, I love, Beruz is one of my favorite IFB pros at the moment. I love that guy's physique. And um, like, like I said, I was going crazy at uh, Romania last year. And I, I just, I, I'm so happy that he got over because I wasn't sure that he was going to make it over. I was speaking to Milos the last few days and I said, Milos is, is it certain he's going to get? And he says, no, it's still not hundred percent certain. So it was a bit of a nail biter this one, but um, yeah. I predict, I, I, obviously we did the preview and I predicted he'd get the win. 
um, quite comfortably. But um, I tell you what, that Wellington Nascau, because I, I, when I brought him up with Miguel in the preview, I wasn't um, familiar with this guy. And, I, and he was the first name on the list. And I said to him, and Miguel says, no, no, this guy is really good. Um, he said he's really, really good. He said he's one to watch. And um, yeah, and I was watching, uh, looking at what some of the, the, the feedback over after the prejudging. And they did have Wellington and Beruz as the top two. So for this, for that to be the top two, it was no surprise. So um, I'm yeah. really, really happy for Beruz. And I know this win is going to mean a lot to him. I just hope he can get to the Olympia because he couldn't get to the Olympia last year. And yeah. um, it's just, if they can sort the visa for Hadi, I said to Milos, I said, just please get whatever you did with him through sponsorship, through the company like uh, Hani did with Evergen. Please try and do the same with uh, Beruz. I said, sponsor him through your... Um, the, the, the company's got with Jim Stepani. I said, try and just just speak to Hani and just try and duplicate it because if we can get Hadi in three years on the trot, 19, 20, 21 and 22, yeah. then surely then surely we can get Beirouz to the Olympia because we have to get this guy in the Olympia because he is top 10 material. And um, like I said, I just, I, 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 I've just been raving about this guy for two years because Milos has never actually seen Beirouz in the flesh, but I've seen him in the flesh twice now. So now let me ask, go ahead. In the other show, person. Did you notice if he was sweating that much? Like, was he standing off as well, or was it just in Brazil? Uh, it wasn't sweating, but he was very, very flat at the pre-judging in Romania. It's just at the night show, he always seems to just fix everything. But um, like I said, I, I was, I was like Jen, I was a bit worried about the pre-judging because it's, it's, I mean, he looked really. I mean, all the tan down the front. I mean, it looks, it's so distracting. And I mean, he wasn't even trying to rub it in or anything or get it toweled off. He was just he just kept on going and kept on posing. And I thought that's a mistake. So that's the sort of, that's the sort of mistake that, you know, you couldn't make it the Olympia because that could cost you like five, six places. So um, I, um, I think, yeah, I was I, I, I knew that it, with the confirmation round tonight, I think he would have sealed the deal. But I would imagine that I think he still would have won prejudging, but only just. Yes, I mean, I agree. Like. Strings, especially his back, upper back, everything was. Yes, right. From mm -hmm. the front, Niskal has a little bit more aesthetics, you know, like his body. Oh, so wow. I love his physique. His, his structure is crazy. Yeah. But a little bit more size. And that's going to come with time, you know. I think he's very young. So, because of that, I think there was no co comparisons in terms of the size, the volume. And mm -hmm. from the However, if you look at the quads from the front, Nace Cow, oh my gosh, like his belly is so round, oh so cool, right? He has this like beautiful, like healthy look, you know. I really like his legs. So he's got, we'll see. He's got I, great, I, legs. Like, great legs. I think I think with Wellington, I mean actually, like you said, he has a more aesthetic, more balanced look, but I just think Beruz's upper body was just too too dominating. But thing is, I mean I mean, would I, I would have been shocked if Wellington even have say one or two first places, but then again, they would have been eliminated anyway. Mm. But um, yeah, he was. I I was really really impressed with him, and especially when they came out right at the end, I was like, this guy is really really good. Because there was guys like Amir and Joseph that were very very impressive as well. Yes. I thought Amir looked. I thought Amir Omaragic, twenty three years old, looked absolutely fantastic. A real. I mean, he was crisp. He was separated. He's bigger than he was last year. Um, I, I mean, I had him here on uh, the last global, and um, he's been in Brazil for the last three months training with Johan, Johan Schatz. And, yeah, um, yeah, yes. yeah. He was like, and he cha he changed his body so much within like two months. I'm like, wow, that is. And he's enjoying Brazil, so I hope he stays a little bit more there. But you know who surprised me, Peter Boff. I thought he would be higher. He's also coaching him. And then, uh, at the, I think last year at the Arnold, he placed second to Rafael Brandão. Yeah. And I thought he would be like right there. I had him in my like top three before I saw the show. Mm -hmm. I was like, predictions. I'm like, I think he's going to place very well. And he got fifth. I'm like, wow. Yeah. That, just just yeah. shows it was a tougher lineup. Just shows it was a tougher lineup, you know? But um, I like this Joseph, you know? I think he was really good. Because I was, I was trying to get him on Global two weeks ago. And he said, uh, he says, Giles, please, can we wait till after the show? He said, I'm so tired. He said, I'm so exhausted. He said, I'd rather do a better job after the, um, after the, uh, after the show. He says, 
Because I said, I've been looking at your pictures, mate. I said, I'm impressed. I said, the detail. I said, you're big, you're conditioned, you're separated, you're detailed. I said, I think you're going to do really, really well in your pro debut. So, um, yeah, I thought he was really, really good. I think he's he's another one who was very, very well balanced. I like some of his shots. Uh, I mean, Jen, you had him you had him in pole position at the pre-judging, didn't you? I did. I did. I'm not going to lie about that. I, I really thought he could have been third or fourth. But, you know, to see him in fifth place, that's not too far off from where I had him. He, it, it was just the competition in this show was just that much better. Cool. Fourth. Fourth? Yeah. I thought he was fifth. Yeah, Vito was fifth. Vito fifth. Um, Joseph was fourth. And he was third. Right. That's what I meant. Vito was, I'm sorry. I digress. But Joseph, no. I actually had him winning the show at one point during the pre-judging because he just looked yeah. absolutely spot on, dry, full, really great. And like I said, yeah. Barros didn't seem to have it quite there at one point. He was sweating profusely. His tan looked a little off, but he pulled it out. And what a win. When he came back for the night show, he really showed, you know, he was there to win and own this competition. You know what I noticed? If you pay attention, if you pay close attention, you're going to see that most of the international athletes had issues with their tanning, either like mm. melting. Or Good point. I was wondering, maybe they use a different product or maybe they are just not, not used to the weather in Brazil. I don't know. I think but I think. And so all the Brazilians had their tanning just fine, but all the like international athletes, it was like a mess. Wow. I was yeah. stood I was I was stood on stage once competing and I was literally right by these lights and I was just literally it was just literally gushing off me. I was I was looking at a pool of a tan. And maybe maybe it's just the lighting. Maybe it's, the thing is there was a lot of people in that venue so it yeah. would have been very 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 hot. It was like that um you know the venue in Spain they have it, the um in Alicante. I mean that was the that, that was the hottest venue I've ever been in. I mean everyone's tan was just going crazy on that one. Because the thing is, if it's put if it's applied backstage, it doesn't have a chance to properly dry. I don't think. You yes. know, so these, these, some of these like I mean, um, um, what's his name? Oh, the big, you, the big Slovak Slovenian Slovakian guy. What's his name? The Chriso. Big, Chriso. 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 Yeah. I mean, he showed up to the show in the morning white as a sheet. <laughs> an hour and a half he's on stage, and I'm like. Mate, you 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 haven't had a chance to get your tan dry yet. So one yeah, day, so then bad. obviously his arms are brushing against his lats, and he had these big white lats and these white triceps because the tan was rubbing off because obviously he was so big, you know. But um, I mean, I think this uh, this this showing up backstage an hour before and getting your tan done, I don't think it's uh, unless you unless it's like cool enough backstage, you just get, it's just gonna it's not gonna dry and it's just gonna melt off as soon as you get on stage, especially in somewhere that's probably really. I imagine Brazil's probably quite humid, is it? Yes, I mean, the weather in Brazil, like, I competed there for the first time last year. Okay. And it's very cold backstage. It doesn't matter, like, if it's hot or cold. I am always cold. Oh, it's wow. My, I don't know. I never sweat. I'm always, like, and I'm not even nervous, you know. I'm just, I don't know. That's how my body responds. Wow. But in Brazil, first time, I was hot. So I think it's something with the weather there. Mm. And all the that they use, I know a lot of Brazilians, they use olive oil after the tanning. Oh, wow. And that's not what do here. Like, most Americans don't do that. So maybe there's something to do with what they were using and their bodies are not used to. I don't know. But it was an interesting thing to pay attention to. I'm like, okay. So I was literally, like, marked down all the athletes who had their, the tanning melting. And I noticed, okay, the Brazilians don't have this issue. So maybe that's what is going on. But Wow. You, yeah. And okay. even, like, Bear Ruses was the worst, though, wasn't it? That was the worst. I mean, the thing is, I mean, you, you, yeah. I don't. I think that's a real rookie mistake you've got to address. Like I said, you either got to, like, you see some guys, they'll go off stage and they'll towel it off, but he or they'll rub it in or something. But he just carried on posing, and I think that's a mistake. I think that's something you have to address for future shows. Sure. And I also saw that um, the production, the Arnold South America production, were putting like fans. So because they know this, you know, that they were sweating a lot. So I saw in one of the backstage videos that they were putting fans towards the athletes to help out. So that's not to look out for the athletes and try to make the show better. Yeah, good, good, good. 
So, um, is Miguel coming or Jen? Or? Yeah, we're waiting on Miguel. He's just having... Come on, Miguel. Yeah, Miguel's he's off, just trying to find off, a little move. spot for to record, uh, to get online and get some uh, good bandwidth. And Ron's traveling back from uh, Australia today, isn't he? Yes, Ron should be back in the States uh, sometime tomorrow. Oh, brilliant. And brilliant. I've missed them. He sent us a... T- well, he, I know he's been sending us a ton of pictures. I got. Have you seen any of his pictures, Natalia? No, I haven't seen them yet. Okay, <laughs> let me see. I got a couple here. Who wants to see Ron's vacation pictures? <laughs> All right, chat. Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> All right, let me see. I got it right over here. I'll pull that up. And while we're waiting for Miguel did, to come in, what's that? Why did you guys? Oh, did you see Biko? This guy actually turned pro yesterday at the Arnold South America. Is that the he, short guy? Yes, Miguel, yeah. Miguel was telling yeah, yeah, about him. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I think he was number 14, I believe. But man, he won last. last I think, yeah, yesterday, he won the overall, and then he jumped in in the pro show, and mm-hmm. what a physique. He's going to go far. You, you remind me a bit of um, a Vito, a little bit. Yeah, it's like a, a shorter version of him. Giles, get to bed, Mark Bates. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I'm, I'd love to go to bed. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> He's here so oh, Ron doesn't have to be. Yes, I'm standing in for him. I'm, 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 yeah. Yeah, we got, uh, we got his back. <laughs> cool. Yeah. While he's down in a, in a land down under. My new iPhone 14 Pro. Oh, very nice. Oh, you like it? I want to get my. IPhone it's good. It's, it's okay. Curious. Yeah, it's good. I mean, my iPhone 12 was amazing. I love that. But um, and I'd have a scratch on it. But uh, they said I was eligible for an upgrade, so I thought I may as well go for it. So. I don't want to do that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, don't don't bring any rude photos up, please, Jen. <laughs> no, that would be your camera roll. Oh yes, you don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me just bring that over. Yeah. So anyway, Beruz is qualified for the Olympia anyway. So, but like I said, he was qualified last year with Romania, but he couldn't get there. So, I mean, he must, um, how stressful is that when you must be prepping? Because he was still prepping up to about a week before, like Hadi was in 2019. And he's thinking, and he's still hoping for the best. That must be really quite stressful, prepping for a show you don't know whether, you can, don't know even if you can get to. I really, I really feel for those guys, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, doing everything you need to do, being tired and everything on prep. And then you've got the stress of not knowing whether you're going to be able to get on the flight or, you know, that must be, I can't imagine what that's like. I mean, just you'd want to know either way or you'd want it sorted somehow. Well, but um, this, this Iran and America thing is really quite strict, isn't it? But like I said, they did it for Hadi. Hadi was 19, 20, 21, 22. So he's done it four times, four years on the row. Right. So why can't they let Beruz into the USA? I think because it was such short notice. When he won in Romania, it was only like a month and a half until Olympia. Now yeah. that he's won at Arnold Brazil, they have some time to get the visa together. So I do think we'll see Beirut on the Olympia stage. Hope so. He needs to get those quads up, though. Milos needs to get him on some proper quad workouts there and get some, get some thickness to those quads. I'll tell you something. Front. Milos is going after our Hani Rambout's title, maybe, for most winningest Olympia coach. If Samson wins, yeah. if, you know, you don't know. I mean, Samson. Looking better and better. Every time I see updates of him, I'm like, wow. And you know what? He's such like a hands-on coach. He has so many athletes, especially now in Brazil. Everybody's talking about him. Everybody's yeah. and he still makes time for everybody. I'm like, wow. Well, He's- I spoke. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I spoke. We lost today, and I said, um, I said to him, I said, I, how, um, I said, I can't even imagine the work you put into your clients, Milos. And he said, it's so stressful. <laughs> he said, I had two hours of sleep. <laughs> and I said, I couldn't do it, Milos. 
He said, especially when everything that you expect, for whatever reason, doesn't happen and you have to fix it. I says, especially when you're not with them too. And he says, yes, man. <laughs> <laughs> so That's awesome. Cheers. Because imagine when you're not with your client as well. I mean, that's, you know, and you, you know, like, a, especially a front runner like Beru's, you know, and he yeah. wants really, because like you said, Milos with Samson now winning the Arnold. That's his biggest win. That's kind of, he's kind of on a bit of a roll now. So I suppose, you know, he wants to be with his clients so he can c try and sort of bring out the best in them, you know? So, because I know Beru's always, Beru's always get sick on a prep. Every yeah. single prep that Milos has done with Beru's, uh, Beru's has got sick. Really? And Milos always tells me in secret a few weeks out, and he says, oh, he said, here he is. He's lost five, four kilos, and and then he somehow manages to pull it round in the last few weeks, and then he just scrapes through. But because um, I think Milos is a bit concerned. I think he felt that Beru was a little bit um, behind a few weeks ago because he was sick. And I oh, said, what will happen will probably happen like it did for Romania. He'll probably just, he'll probably just whatever he's got will clear up and then he'll just manage to, you know, scrape through and you'll win, you know? So that's exactly what happened in Romania and exactly what's happened here as well. Yeah. Interesting. I, oh, Arnold was not, not there. He was supposed to be. I saw an interview that Arnold Schwarzenegger was going to be there. Up to like two weeks ago, everything was set. He was, you know, confirmed to be there. And then he called Anna, which is one of his business partners in Brazil. She's responsible for the show, the production and stuff like that. And then he told, I mean, he's, a, I think one of his um, managers or somebody called her saying that he wouldn't be able to come. And I'm like, oh, that's so sad. But he did a very nice video. I saw they played the video before the show. They talked to the athletes and then it was fun, but it would be cool to see Arnold there. Yeah. It was yeah. like the Arnold or in history, I believe yeah. they had athletes in the amateur show how many like, so? 600 600 athletes that is crazy i'm like wow that is big wow. so yeah we're happy to see that brazil is such like a big you know nation now for bodybuilding and it has been growing like every year you know so makes me proud yeah i mean i just yeah i remember in 2017 when i was at the san marino and patrick tour was prepping rafael brando who's making his pro debut at 24 years old and i had a chat with patrick after the, the day after the show i interviewed him at the the hotel and um he was telling me he said giles he says something very special is happening in brazil he said things are absolutely exploding over there right now for bodybuilding he says we're doing seminars he said we're treated like rock stars he said and there's like hundreds and hundreds of people at these seminars he says there's gyms and and supplement stores on every single street corner he says and everything is just kind of he said it's just something very very special is happening there and he says and, the, and, and he says and the sponsors really look after their athletes and um which i I th i'm always happy to hear stuff like that you know like with um like egypt with rami and you know the the, yeah. the kind of the, the the injection of enthusiasm yeah. and support and the love and like the real and, and you hear the fans at, the, at the, these art, at these Brazilian shows, and the, everyone just sounds like they're just going absolutely crazy. You know, it's like like almost like soccer, soccer, like the, like the soccer fans. You know, oh, wow. I love it. I love it. I think it's absolutely amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Well, looks like Miguel just tried to come into the uh, waiting room. So, Natalia, where do you where do you live then? I live in Florida. Oh, you live in Florida? Oh, okay. I thought you knew that. I most of my family lives in Brazil still. So I go there very often to visit my dad, my brother, my family. But my mom and I live here in Florida. Okay, why Florida? Orlando. So the Olympia is going to be home to me. Oh, no. <laughs> Just quick <Not> drive. <laughs> why, why Florida in particular, Easy though? How long do you live there for? <laughs> well, um, I moved here like 10 years ago. Okay. My mom had a job here. And then I just moved with my brother. And then my brother went back to Brazil to live with my dad and finish college there and all that stuff. And I found myself here because of bodybuilding. And I'm like, I'm not going anywhere. And I was in New York. So I'm American, you know, like I have both citizenships. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, to make like all my dreams come true. I am not going to leave my mom alone. Never. My mom needed to be here working. And for my whole life, like she was always very supportive. And I'm like, now that she needs me, I'm going to go back to Brazil. There's no way I'm going to do that. So oh, I stayed yeah. 
And now I don't want to leave and I don't let her leave. I'm like, no, mom, we got to stay here. <laughs> yes. I, I remember, um, I remember in 2017 when you, you didn't place top 15 at the Olympia in figure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I said, and I said, I said, cause I said in the summer you'd won four, you won four pro shows as figure. And I was on the forum and I said, I said, this girl needs to go to women's physique. I said, look at her quads. I said, she stands, she's trying to hide the size of her quads because she stands with her legs like really close together to try and like minimize the size of her quads. I said, and then someone said, he says, but why would she, why would she switch when she's winning so well in figure? And I said, I'm telling you, I said, it's going to, it's going to happen. She's going to go, she's going to switch. And then after, after you didn't make top 15 at Olympia in figure, you did a show, was it in October in, in Florida? Yes, it was a week later, actually. Week later in women's physique, and you never look back. And I won, yes, because like I did two show, two Olympics as figure. The first one, I, and then the second, I played sixteenth. I'm like, how? Like, how am I doing so many pro shows, winning all the pro? When I get to the Olympia, I don't place. So I talked to the judges. They told me, Natalia, we know we can tell that you're trying to hide your feathers, your striations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But we see them, so you yeah. gotta come or try women's physique. So that's what I did. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna stop hiding. I was literally walking with my hands like in front of my quad, so they wouldn't see when I stand. I, re I remember no, because I, I remember because I remember seeing a picture and I was and you you push your legs so close together, and I was like, <laughs> I, she can't hide them. You cannot hide those quads. I am I'm seeing those quads. I said those are those are women's physique quads. Just wait, you know, because. Because now in figure the, the quads are quite big, but that's but four or five years ago they weren't. So you were kind of you probably would have fit in figure now a bit better, but I mean, because obviously they've got more muscular, but uh yeah, you could see your physique was yeah, you could see you were trying to hide it. I could I could tell. I could tell even in photos I could tell Natalia. Right. And that's what I'm saying, like the judges are like, Natalia, we can tell that you're trying to hide, you know. And yeah. I'm like <laughs> So yeah. I did a week later. And then I won and I got the invitation for the Arnold the next year. Wow. And I'm like, so let's see how that goes. And I play second to Shanique. And then the following year, I won the Arnold. Yes. And then I won the two years in a row. I'm like, there's no way I'm going back to figure. Now I can actually show off my physique. I can, you know, pose, have fun, flex, do everything that I like to do, you know. Well, that reminds me. So of, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh. No, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying, like, um, it is kind of, like, uncomfortable when you go on stage and you know that you cannot show some things, they don't want to see some things, and it's not, like, in a bad way, like, I'm out of shape. It's because it's kind of too much for what they are looking for. So it was like they were penalizing me to be in shape, <laughs> pretty yep. much. But yep. because I'm criteria, of course. So for those who, of you who don't know, we have criteria for every category. And if you're not, you know looking how they want you to look, either you have to change or change categories. Oh, wow. I don't know. I didn't want to come softer. You know, it's just like the way I like to train, I like to diet, and I like to suffer. So I'm like, you know what? Let's step up women's physique. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, paid off, paid off. And I, I, tr I, I tried to find the guy that tried to convince me that you should have stayed in figure after you did that <laughs> show, and I, I couldn't find him. I think he left the forum. <laughs> Probably, right? I was like, where are you? Where are you? I told you I was right. I'm always right. <laughs> well, you know, what was interesting wow. is that I had a conversation with Natalia on WhatsApp a couple of days ago, and I asked her if I could ask this question on air because there's been a lot of chatter wondering about one thing in particular because we've seen a lot of athletes jumping the lane into other divisions. Lunsford did it from 212 into open, became runner up at the Olympia. You had Brooke Walker. She did. She went to women's physique. So the question I have for you is, let's say you get a couple more titles in women's physique. Would you ever consider going into the Ms. Olympia Open division and challenging either Andrea Shaw or the current Miss Olympia at the time? Or if there's no Miss Olympia at the time? Well, um, as I told you before, and I'm going to tell now for everybody, admire them a lot. I respect them a lot. And I think this is so beautiful what Jake Wood is doing for the women's physique, the women's bodybuilding, bring that back and showing them all the respect that they deserve. 
and I'm a fan. I like the category. I want the category to grow and to stay, but my place is in women's physique. My heart is in women's physique. And my goal is representing the best, you know, I can. And I just love it, you know. And I think that's the thing, you know. It's it's okay. I got one title. I am very happy. I'm very proud, blessed. But I want to continue to fight for that. I want to, you know, like, I want to create a legacy. You know what I mean? I just want to show, like, everybody how much I love this sport, how much passion I have, and show that I'm young, I'm healthy, and I have so much energy into my heart to put it back in this sport. And I think, like, this guy's the limit, you know? I have so many projects, so many things going on that the women's physique category needs that because I don't see, at least up to now, many people doing too much. Maybe they just don't know where to start. And I want to be the light. I want to show them the path. I want to show, like, listen, let's get together. Let's make the... Because once the women's physique grows, the whole sport grows, you know? We're not just going to grow women's physique. We are a family. We are all the divisions, all the categories are in the same sport. Aren't you like 25 or something, 26? Wow. Yes. <laughs> I'm 26. How old are you? 26. My God. And you've, wow. really, and you've achieved all that already. Because I saw those pictures of when you're on stage at 16, weren't you? Yes. <laughs> oh, they're tiny. <laughs> you know, wow. 10 years. Been competing for 10 years. What age did you start training? I started training when I was 12. <laughs> And like to compete, like very serious and dieting and everything when I was 15. Wow. Wow. Holy shit. Beginning, but Indeed. at 12, I was a you know, reading a lot, trying to learn as much as I could. But at 15, I'm like, I'm in prep. And people are like, what does that mean? <laughs> I'm like, leave me alone. I'm in prep. <laughs> I used to say all the time. I remember going to high school. My professors would, would not let me eat in class. They wouldn't understand anything that Doing. I do. Of water, they're like, "What are you doing that for?" I'm like, "One day you guys are gonna see." Yeah. So, you know, loving what I was doing, and I Brilliant. think that's you have to believe in yourself. You have to dream big, you know, because life is too short, man. If we don't dream, we don't do what we love. What is the purpose of life? You know, it's true. like one day we. So the thing is, like, you got to wake up every single day excited. You have to wake up and say, like, I am alive and I'm going to make the most out of my day, of my life. It's up to you. It's all about how you look at things, your perspective, your mindset. And I try to, you know, work on manifestation, affirmations every single day. Well, it's worked. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> it worked, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was glad I was there as well. I was, I'm glad I was there to see Wind Olympia as well because I was there obviously sat last year in December. Gonna, yes. Sorry? Are you coming to the Olympia this year? Hopefully, hopefully. You yes. better come. <laughs> yeah, I've been to, I mean, the Olympics I've been to, hang on, 2001, 2, 10, 16, 17, 18, 19, 22. I've been to eight, eight Olympias. Oh. I, I was there in 2001 um, when Ronnie won and Jay was second. And I was there 2002 and I had my press pass and I was backstage. And I could, that was when you could just run back and forth backstage with my camera. And I've got all these backstage pictures of Kevin Navrone. I saw Chris Cormier getting changed. I uh, was chatting to Joe Weider, Gunter, um, uh, Art Atwood, Craig Titus. <laughs> I mean, they were all, and it, it was literally all in just one big room, and I was just like, Ugh. amazing. I got some pictures of Kevin Navrone practicing his posing routine backstage with Joe Weeder watching. So I've got, I've got them all in 35 millimeter, and I'm trying to act all cool and uh, like, I'm, you know, like I, 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 I need to be there. But uh, <laughs> it was incredible. And I remember when Gunter got fifth, and, we, every, and everyone gave him a stand innovation, and I was clapping so hard. I had one of my, I had one of these rings, and I broke it. <laughs> yeah, this ring I got from Greece. I got it from what? Greece. I got it on a holiday. Oh my god! Oh my god. Just get because he got because he just looked incredible. And then obviously a few weeks later he beat Ronnie at the the GNC wow. show. I mean Ronnie got mad and then came back the next year looking like an alien. Ah. But, uh, yeah, what a great experience! I was only 26, 26, wow. 25, 25 Yeah, those Olympias, and it was uh, really. Uh, yeah, really, really good. Really good. I mean, I, I, I partied a bit too hard the second year, though. 
Oh, <laughs> we actually we had we, we, we it was me and another guy from a British magazine, a British bodybuilder magazine, and he actually fell asleep at the press conference. <laughs> Wake up! I oh. said you can't go to sleep. Don't go to sleep. Went, oh, oh my! We've been God. Um, we were we were bur we, we call it burning the candle at both ends. <laughs> and when I when I got home, uh, my girlfriend, uh, so I I because I, I got home a little a couple of hours early and I needed the house key, so I went to her work. To get the house key, when she saw me, she burst into tears. It looks such a mess. <laughs> oh so, my God. These are not these are not things to be, these are not things to be proud of, though. So, but I was I was well, I was I was young and stupid. <laughs> now I'm old. And, now I'm just old and stupid. <laughs> so, no, that's what they say. We gotta do stupid things when we are young. Oh yeah. So we can learn. When we are older, but mm. in that case, old and stupid still. So it doesn't no. apply. I think you're going to do it in reverse. Like you're going to probably get to your 40s and act go a bit crazy like Dorian did. <laughs> no. I, think I'm not. I learned from... I watch people. I observe. I study people so much. Like, I pay attention to everything. So, I don't think I have to go through what they went through and make the mistakes that other people make to learn. Yeah. And people just don't get it. They're like, well, um, I'm going to do my own thing or whatever. And then they learn the the tough way, you know. Yes. Yeah. Well, you got no. your purpose and direction early on in life. So you you knew what you wanted to do from like 15, 16. You're prepping when you're 15, 16. So you knew what you wanted to do. You had your direction. Most people that age don't have a direction. They don't have anything. They just they just basically making their way in the big wide world and they're just making mistake after mistake, kind of like I did, you know. Mm. But uh, even though I was, I was making, you know, I had a good career and stuff when I was like 23, from 23 onwards, I had a really good career and I was making very, very good money and stuff. But I, I had this kind of, this untapped wild side as well, you know, living in this kind of party capital city and everything. And I kind of made the most of it, you know, so. Yeah, that's right. Well, my mom, <laughs> like you're 15 years old, you don't want to go out, you don't want to do anything, you don't want to party, yeah. you don't want to, why are you doing that for I'm like, mom, I have a goal, I have a dream. And she's yeah. like, no, you know, like people don't do that. You're a teenager. So I used to go to the gym, hide it. I would get my bicycle when she was sleeping and go to the gym, riding there. And then I remember one day it was raining so much that I couldn't, I could not even like ride my bicycle. So I was literally like with my bicycle, you know, because it was raining so much. And then she calls me, she woke up or something. And then she's like, where are you? I'm like, what, what am I going to say? Like, I didn't know what to say. And then I told her that I was drove there to pick me up. And I'm like, oh, no. But it's fun, you know. I think these things make us stronger. Yes. And I always like, nowadays, everybody knows she's my biggest fan. But she tells me she's always saying, I'm so sorry for not understanding. You know, I didn't support you because I didn't understand the sport. I didn't know what you were trying to achieve. Wow. Now, now you educate me on what you're trying to achieve. But I'm like, mom, you don't have to apologize. You know, like I am who I am because you put the obstacles on my way. And I had to learn to skip, like to go through the obstacles. You know, if we never have obstacles, how are we gonna grow in life? You know, if everything is easy and the way you want, I don't think you grow or at least not as strong as you should be. And that's how I try to see, you know, every time things happen in my life that it's not, the way I was expecting it to happen, I just take it like, okay, it's part of the game. If I'm going to do that, it's because I'm going to learn something and I'm going to take that and, you know, just as a lesson. Good. I think um, I think family, once they come to a show and they see what it's all about and they see why you're eating all that funny food and mm -hmm. eating so often and, and why you're having to go to the gym, I think then they understand it. I think then they get an understanding oh. for why you're, why you're doing it, you know? Oh. We lost you for a second, Natalia. Right, still, I still there. Accidentally, lost it. Ah, oh, is Miguel coming, Jen? Is Miguel coming? Yeah, he's trying to. He's having some difficulty finding, uh, you know, a good spot to, you know, connect. But he'll so he'll be here soon. So, what do you think, Natalia? Do you think Beirut could um, crack top ten at the Olympia this year if he can get into if he can get his visa sorted? Man, I will tell you that I really like his physique. I'm still impressed with his back, all the back poses, especially back double biceps. Yeah. His glutes and 
stand out so much. You know, at least in the lineup that I saw today, like nobody got closer to his back on uh, shots. But talking about the Olympia this year, the Olympia is going to be very, 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 very competitive. Oh, definitely. You know, absolutely. Up and I'm like, that's going to be tough. I really want to see him there, see how he stands next to all the guys. And he has chances, of course, to be in the top 10. I think he has the potential. If he can grow a little bit his quads mm -hmm. and work, it's going to be right there. I don't like this bending his leg thing he does because it actually highlights, it draws your eye to his quads more. And I think he needs, and he does it every single time he hits a pose, he bends his legs. And then, then you look, you're not looking at his upper body, you're looking at his legs. He's drawing a tent, he's drawing your eye away from his upper body and takes it down to his legs. And I think he needs to stop doing that because he does it. And every single time he does a front lap spread, a front wall bicep, an ab and, th ab and thigh, most muscular, and he does it when he come, He kind of sits in, kind of gets himself into the pose by bending his legs. And then you're seeing how, how it kind of really is only weakness. But um, I think he needs to address that because I, I think that's that's a bit of a mistake in doing that. Now you get about five million messages from Milos in the next half hour saying, why did you say that? Oh, no, why no. did you do that? No, well, no. Also, everyone, I, I, I just want to. Me and Milos have been, me and Milos haven't argued for at least a month. I just want to. I love you. I just want to acknowledge in our chat, we have a VIP, desktop bodybuilding. Xavier is here. I just want to say hi. You're all right, mate. Hi, Xavier. Hey. I was actually on his channel this morning. We did a pre-judging there together. Wow. So that was, and now he's here with us. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. Well, thank you for joining us, Xavier. So nice to have you. And thank you everyone for joining us in chat. We're happy to have you with us as well. As we wait for Miguel to come on, who should be here soon, I hope. But you never know. He, so, he, he you know, he could be having some difficulty. There's a lot of people there. I'm sure he'll be with us very shortly. Probably very noisy. Oh, yeah. Yes. The expo was so big. I was very, very... Man, I was watching yesterday. It would not even walk. Like, so many people. It reminds me of my very first Arnold when I went to Ohio. It was my very first expo. I was like, wow. Too much. Too much. Like, right, yes, he's crazy. No. He gets you, like... I don't know, it gives you a feeling of, okay, I cannot move. Like, you want to walk, you cannot walk. And, but at the same time, it shows how much we are growing. So that's a good thing. I can't complain. It's I, good. Was the, I went to the first Arnold Europe, the first Arnold that was ever outside of America. Remember, because when they decided to start expanding them, the first one they did, apart from the Columbus, Ohio one, was the Arnold Madrid, the Arnold Europe one. That was 2011. And uh, me and Flex Wheeler were covering it for MD. And um, there's a couple of, I'll tell you a couple of funny things that happened. Um, um, my, my girlfriend at the time came with me and she was doing the filming. And me and Flex Wheeler did a 14 minute wrap up for the pro show. And she said, wow. um, and we, finished, she, we finished and she said, sorry guys, I forgot to press record. No way. <laughs> oh. So I said, so, um, oh I just my went, God. I just said, Flex, could you hold this microphone, please? Oh, <laughs> so he held the man. microphone and he went, oh, guys, you're not, he says, guys, guys, you're not going to have a domestic. Not here, not here. I said, just hold the mic. So I just oh, walked and I, I walked very calm. I walked very calmly straight past her. I didn't even look at her. I didn't say anything to her. And I found a, I found a fire door just to take me outside, away from people. <laughs> and I went outside and I just went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I started it's like it was like I was fighting. It's like I was fighting invisible ninjas. Oh, like, ah! man. <laughs> I went absolutely. I just let it all out. I just let it all out, <laughs> and then I just went, went back in. I got the mic out of Flex Wheeler's hand, and I said, "Flex, should we do that again?" I said, and I said to her, and I said, um, "Make sure you press record." <laughs> and, we did, and we did it. We did it, and it was absolutely brilliant. We did it even better the second time. So that that happened, and, all, and also this was the show. This was the show where the um, the amateur bikini was won by an Argentinian girl that was fourteen. Whoa! Yeah, she was fourteen, and she and and that was back in the days when bikini was a little bit more. It was a little bit more sexually posed. Like it was a bit. It was they they tightened it up a bit actually after that, 
And wow. it was actually from that show at the end, the, from that show, the MPC and everyone, uh, the minimum age for bikini became 16 they, because of that, because there was such a backlash. Um, this... And she still competes. She's in figure. She competes in figure now because I recognized her because wow. she's um, she had a very distinct look. But um, yeah, and, and Flex Wheeler, and he, he, he said, he said, did you know that girl who won the bikini was 14? And I went, mm. and I just, I proper freaked out. It was crazy. Wow. Um, yeah, 14. That's and then um, and that was when Ronnie Coleman launched his supplement company. And I went and I, I said to Ronnie, because I know Ronnie, obviously I do the show with him. And I said, can I, um, can I just use your PowerPoint just to upload some pictures to MD's server? And he said, yeah. So I sat next to Ronnie and that many people were coming. We were, we, there, were, there was this big, like, fake wall, you know, the, of the booth. And there was that many people trying to get to the stand, all the fans, that me and Ronnie were sat next to each other. And we looked up and I said, Ronnie, I think we need to move because the wall started to bend over like that. Oh, people, my that God. Many, that many people were pushing forward. And I thought, and I said, Ronnie, we need to move, Matt. I said, because if, if these people keep coming, I said, we're going to get crushed. You know, oh. and Ronnie went, I think you're right. <laughs> yeah. we, so we, we moved. It was really kind of, I've talked about that with Ronnie a few times, actually. And he just looked at me and he went, yeah, I think you're right, Joel. <laughs> I'd like to pay attention to that. Can you imagine? Oh, my gosh, that would be crazy. Crazy, because <laughs> people just wanting to, it's always like, I've, I've been, I've worked with Ronnie at FIBO and Body Power in the UK. And it's like, it, the, the, oh, my God, people see him, they go crazy. It's like a still, you know. It's amazing. I love it. He deserves all of it. Well, crux me up that story you told me about that woman that you met at the laundromat. And you were saying how you were um, you were going to film with Ronnie Coleman that weekend. And she was like, oh, Ronnie Coleman. Yeah, I saw him on the Netflix. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 She's, yeah, and, she said, yeah, 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 that's where they knew it. That's where a lot of people knew it from. Well, I did right. that, we did that seminar in September in London and people were coming up to us on the street outside the hotel. People were driving past, beeping their horns and it was crazy. Wow. Was really crazy. Like, real, like he's real, like real, real celebrity, you know? It, it just shows you the reach he has and the power he has to inspire yeah. and how many people, you know, have gotten to know him because of that documentary. I think I'm. I think I'm filming with again with him in a couple of weeks. I'm gonna me, him, and Samson. Oh, that would be Whoa. cool. Nice. Because well, he's done a big thing with Derek Lunsford, and yeah. he's he had Derek up to the offices, and they did some filming at the studio in the gym and everything. And um, uh, the, the other one he's really impressed with is Samson. He thinks Samson's got the right mindset. He really thinks he's, so. I said. So I said, well, look, why don't we do? Why don't we push Derek and Samson as the two guys that you're pushing to do really well at the Olympic? Because I mean, that they that could be that's probably going to be two of the top three guys this year. I agree. Olympic, yes, you know, probably yeah, Hadi so. Samson and Hadi Samson and Derek. I mean, that could be a likely top three. Yes, you know what's going to be fun? The Pittsburgh Pro because everybody's going to be there guest posing. Yes. So we're going to idea how they stand. Of course, they ain't off season. But it's still super exciting to see them like standing next to each other. Yeah, like yeah. for we. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be a lot. Yeah, Derek Lunsford, Derek Lunsford just lit the world up last year when he did that guest posing. That yes, yeah. I mean, he blew Nick Walker, Hunter, Brandon Curry off the stage, and he only planned to do it. Was it a few days before or something? I know he was gonna be there with Hunter, but he wasn't planning to guest pose. And then yeah. when he couldn't come, Jim Manio asked him, can you guys pose for me? And he's like, yeah, sure. Give me some trunks. Let's do it. I'm like, wow. <laughs> it's crazy. But, crazy. I, I, I think that's absolutely amazing. Like, absolutely amazing. But uh, when he came out at the Olympia, when he did that front relaxed, we were just, everyone was just, we were just going, oh, everyone just went crazy. In fact, he came out better than Hadi did at the start of the show. Oh, because I, yeah. when Steve Blackman was with us, Steve Blackman was with us, obviously, and he said when Hadi first came out, he went, "Oh, Hadi's off," and I went, "I think he is," but then Hadi sharpened up unbelievably. Oh yeah, in half an hour, I've never seen anyone sharpen up so fast. Actually, oh yeah, yeah. But I know Derek said because he had a lot of like ups and downs this last prep for the Olympia. Oh, sorry, he said he wasn't feeling he was not nearly. As good as he could be at the Olympia. Oh, Derek. Okay. Wow. 
So he had some issues. He had some infection, like the skin infection that he had, Ooh. and he was on antibiotics and all that stuff. And I'm like, man, that's how you look without being your 100%. Yeah. Second, looking that good. Can you imagine what he's going to bring this year? It's going to be very good. Uh, he, would, he had the wow factor for me. His back shots were just insane. Oh, yeah. Absolutely insane. So big. But, like, in a good way, you know. Like, he's still, like, same conditioning, proportions are good, everything. He has been adding so much size. Yeah. And, like, his body and, wants to grow. He said, because I spoke to him and his wife at the, at the, well, the seminar, the Sunday seminar at the Olympia. You did. You were there. You were there. And she said, um, she said after the Olympia, she said he was, because he had to keep his weight. He didn't want it. Uh, Hanny said, I don't want his weight going over 240. And she said, it, it, Derek's wife said, she says, I was giving him kale salads. Ooh, and she wow. said he was still getting, she said his body was, he was still getting bigger. She said, and he went, he said, he said, baby, he says, I think my body just needs to grow. He says, I think I need to be able to eat properly. And he did. And he went to 240. Then he got to 250. Wow. Then he got to 260. <laughs> and he was like, okay, then I think we're going open. <laughs> awesome, isn't it? Awesome. It's amazing. So even yeah. on even on having not even on rabbit food, he was still try, his body was still aching to grow. Yes. I that's mean crazy. that's gonna we'll see. Mm. And that is so crazy. But we'll we'll see what happens very soon. Because Olympia, before you know it, will be here. But like you said, I think really it will be one of the most competitive Olympias, even more so than last year. Well, last year was very competitive. Isn't that amazing that like last year we were all talking about it? It's going to be the best Olympia, you know, in the last three years, four years. And then this year we're saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. So it just shows, yeah, you know, like bringing the sport one level up, up, up. Yeah. yeah. So that's. That's bringing excitement back to the sport. And that's what we need. Absolutely. 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 Jen? Yes. Are we are we going much longer? Because I'm it's half past one in the morning for me here. I know, <laughs> I know, Giles. I've got I got I got filming to do tomorrow. I'm so tired. I'm going to find out right now. If you have to go, I understand. It's okay. Okay, so should we reel off the results quickly again? So fifth place was Vita Boss, yes. who was second last year to Raphael Brandao. Fourth place was Zo Zo Joseph from Czech Republic, who looked at, was that, I think that was his pro debut, he looked absolutely sensational. Yes. I think he's got a good future. Uh, hope to see him at the EVLS Prague show later on this year as well, which I'll be doing live stream for again. Uh, third place, 23-year-old Amir Omarajic from Germany, um, who, I, who I think possibly will end up re relocating to Brazil. Second place was Wellington Nascau, yes. who looked absolutely fantastic. And uh, what a future that guy's got. So, Natalia, you said Wellington's quite young. Do you know his age? I don't know his age. I know he's very young, and he looks very young, too. You can tell that his muscles are still developing. So yeah. he's like crazy, you know. I think he's going to continue to get better every show. If you see, if you pay attention to how his muscle bellies are, I said that before, I will say that again. He has the aesthetics, he has the proportions. He just needs a little bit more legs and back, in my opinion, especially from the back. You know, like his hamstrings could be a little thicker. His upper back needs more details, but it's coming. You know, I saw his eyes showing and I'm like, wow, he improved so much. Yeah. He's definitely one to watch. I think if he, if he speaks if he speaks English, I'll try and get him on my show because I wouldn't mind. I like finding out about these guys. I'm going to get Joseph on as well in the next uh, couple of weeks. But because um, I've been going back and forth with him a little bit on Instagram, so and then obviously first we had Berus Tebani, who's now won his second pro show. So you know that's that's two Olympia qualifications on the trot now because obviously he qualified for the Olympia last year but couldn't get there. So obviously the bees. And now he's won the Arnold Brazil. So oh. that's two. That's Arnold Brazil and Romania Mass Muscle Fest Pro. So that's two good wins there. Everyone, we have Mr. Miguel Chain joining us live Yay! from Brazil. Oh, finally. Welcome, Miguel. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to connection. He's trying to connect to audio. He's having a little problem. Hi, Miguel. 
We can't hear you, Miguel. Can you, can you hear us? Excuse me, this late. <laughs> Still connecting. Very soon, he's going to be able to talk. I think I hear. Let's see. Brazilian Wi-Fi is rubbish. Nope, still can't hear you. <laughs> He's still talking. Connecting to audio. Oh, oh, I think we got it. Nope, not yet. Nope. Nope. Miguel looks confused. He can't hear me. Can't hear us either. Oh, he can hear us. Oh, yeah. He's going to try to reconnect. Oh. Oh, here comes my own. Oh, it's Tootsie. Hello? Oops. Hello, darling. Hello, Tootsie. Hello. 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 I just left the venue. Let me go to a quieter place. Okay, no problem. Oh yeah, I, I, I think it's better now. Yes. What's up, guys? How you doing, mate? Hey. I'm Hello. great. So, what was the show like, mate? Just we'll just let you talk. Let it run. Take it. Take us through it. Whether you tell us about your top five and whether you agree with it, mate. Go for it. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, I'd like to, to start talking about uh, Beatles, Tabani. Or are, are you prefer from fifth to go up? Up to you. Yeah. Fifth place, Vitor Boff. He, he, he was good. He wasn't sharp enough, but he came sharper. He came more, more, more leaner or leaner in the finals. The finals uh, it, it were crowded so many people here so many people making noise and he, he posted with a uh, slow song song fitted to, to his physique to his body and sorry for my sound sorry for my it's sound it's okay you're doing fine but it's good but it wasn't enough so fifth place fourth place was joseph uh joseph right Man, I was so impressed with him because he, he's huge. He's huge. Yeah. And he was on. He was very lean, very dry. He's most muscular. He's, he's a very strong pose. And but but fourth place for him. People loved him here. Third place, Emir Menajik. Great guy. I saw him when he was uh, arriving at the place and I talked to him. Very briefly with him and yeah, Johan Schatz. And he told me, I am ready. I improved. And he indeed, he's improved a lot. He was bigger. He was drier. But I, I think the top two guys were too good for him, unfortunately for, unfortunately for him. And the top two guys, and second place, we had Wellington Escal. I just I just interviewed him. And wow. he's... He, Yes, his coach, Fabrizio Pacholot, he suffered a nasty accident. He broke his legs and he wasn't able to follow Wellington in the gym. So Wellington was training alone for like 10 weeks. In the last three weeks, uh, Fabrizio came back and helped him. Uh, so he improved so much in three weeks. He told me, uh, Fabricio can push me those two or three uh, extra reps uh, that I, I couldn't do uh, my, by myself. And he was so dry. He was so dry. But he was great. But uh, from the back, Beros was better than him. Beros was wider, uh, more thicker and denser. And he's huge. I talked to Beros to me, very, uh, at you, very briefly. His weight was 114 kilos. Wow. Stubborn. I'm not sure how, how, how is that in, in pounds. I think it's around 230 pounds. I think. I'm not Charles sure. Ron it. can help us with that. That's around 300. Yes. And 250. 250. Wow. 251. 
Okay. Okay. Two fifty one. Sorry. Two. Two. Two hundred and fifty one pounds. Wow. Wow. That's much. And Wellington was like one hundred and five kilos. Around two hundred and twenty two or something like that, I, I think. And Beatles is so happy. He he okay, we came to Brazil and people uh, welcomed us here. We are very happy and now the next step is working on their visa. Because they told me, okay, Hadi uh, Chopin got a visa, so we are trying to find a good uh, immigration lawyer and try to get our visa to, to the USA. And his next show is Mr. Olympia. Brilliant. Excellent. Brilliant. Miguel, do you know how uh, Nescau is? I'm sorry? It's good. Do you know how, how old Nescau is? Oh, how old? I know. I don't know. I don't know. Sorry for that. I don't know. I don't know. Very young. We are talking about that. He looks very young. So we are trying to find out. Yes, I, I, I think he's like 28, 29, most. He's young. Because he told me he's working with partial, he's working for short, for 10 years. So. Oh. Yes. Yeah. No, I like his physique. I like his physique. I think he's got potential. Yeah. And he beat some good guys today. Yes. Did he do what is his next show? Is he getting ready for another show? He, they might be doing California State, but they are wow. talking about there is two plans, but there's a chance they do the California State. Cool. That would be, a, be nice. Yeah. Imagine if, it, yeah. imagine if Wellington got a, got a qualification now for the Olympia. Yes. When did when did he turn pro? You told me on the on the preview the other day. When when did he turn pro? He turned pro last year at Arnold Classics of America, but wow. remember they for some reason they had the the pro show before the overall amateur. So when he got his pro card, the pro show w was done, and he made his pro debut two weeks later. He got second place, and he he the. the Nice thing is for him, of course, is he competed with Vitor Boff for two times before, and Vitor Boff uh, has beaten him th th those two times. Now he's beaten Vitor Boff, so he's very happy about that because they are friends. But okay, I, I, I want to win, and I'm very I'm happy for that. You know what? Is, like on paper, Vitor Boff has the best placing. So I think that's why a lot of people had him higher. And then he goes to the finals and he plays fifth. So, but that yeah. just shows, you know, that so we cannot just slack off. We got to keep it working and, you know, we never know who's going to compete against us, how we're going to look in the lineup. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. I like to see all the new faces as well. I like to see new faces, you know, um, like Wellington, <laughs> Joseph, you know, it's two new, two newcomers. Amir has only been around a couple of years. I mean, uh, Amir, though, 23 years old. I mean, I, I wrote about it in my next month's MD column, and I said, I said, muscle maturity with guys like Amir Omaragic and Urs Kalasinski. Yeah. I said, the whole muscle maturity yes. argument goes completely out of the window mm -hmm. with these guys because they have mature, dense, thick, striated muscle, and they're like 23, 24. Incredible. Yes, man. Amir was crazy. We had no we face. Peter Boff, I think he jumped in the show like five weeks out the five weeks out from the show. He decided to go there, and I, I think he wasn't it wasn't the best decision, in my opinion, because we had a strong lineup yeah. and prepare for a show in five weeks is not the best thing to do. And we had another nice guy. He got his pro card last night, Gustavo yeah. Bico, and okay. he did a pro show, mm -hmm. the open show, but. He's going to do two and two shows from now. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes, I saw yeah. that video off season with Milos, and then they decided to jump in the show like a quick. But yeah. Milos, Milos is super good. He has been for a long time. But I think that, that was his first show with Milos, right? 
I, 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 I can't, I can't get that it. That was his Sorry. first show with Milos. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Sorry, my uh, my my sound is so bad. The internet is so terrible here. It's okay. First show with Milos, he was with Eduardo Correa before, and he started working with Milos like right after the Olympia. So, first show, first first uh, peak week. I, I think they are improved together. The next shows, of course. He's probably still like getting to know his body, how it sounds. That they're gonna just get better and better. Yes, I think so. I know. I know. Amia is doing the the um, New York Pro and the Cali, I think, as well. Wow. Okay, that's good for him. That's good for him. Yeah, I think that I think you'll get a few of these guys hopefully jumping in the New York Pro because the New York Pro is in what five weeks. Five yeah. weeks. Uh, so I think you'll. I think hopefully we'll. I'd like to see the Yosef compete a few more times um, this season. I'd like to see. I'd like to see him in the New York Pro because I think he could get a top six. Yes, yes. Uh, I think, man, I think Josef is so impressive live. Very so nice. impressive. And he's very tall. Very tall. Yeah. Yes. So he's huge. He's huge. He had a very impressive showing today. That's for sure. Yes, yes. We didn't, we didn't have... Uh, like deep names, but we had great quality for sure. Good. Sounds Jen? good. Yes. My in my internet connection is starting to go unstable, so I'm going to use that as an excuse to go to bed. No problem. <laughs> I think I'm so tired. So no guys, problem. I've got I've got, a, I've got a film tomorrow, but this has been an absolute pleasure. Absolutely. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, Batman's got to go out and fight some crime. Go now. for it, Batman. <laughs> and thank you Natalia for coming to our show tonight we had a wonderful time hanging out with you Miguel thank you for being live from Brazil and calling it as you've been seeing it all night you've done a fantastic job we have photos thank that you. we're going to post later we can't post them now but we have to wait but from all of us to all of you thank you very much for hanging out with us and stay tuned for our next stop, which is the New York Pro. Have a great night, a great weekend. We'll see you soon. Thank you, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you.